Would a studio be able to work with Flawless AI prior to filming to make sure their process for redubbing in post is ready? They wouldn't need to work with us to understand how to do things differently because we're not asking them to do anything differently on set. However, what we very strongly believe and already starting to see is that because these products exist, people are starting to behave differently on set, if that makes sense. So they're starting to shoot differently and think, I don't need to take that extra shot because I can use this product in post for that. But it's been much more of a reactive on their part rather than filmmaking is a very traditional process. And I think that like people will volunteer their changes. I think that if we'd had any presumption that we, we were going to be capable of changing that process up front, then I think we would have probably been delusional. It's the benefit of having lots of filmmakers in the team is that they understand exactly how difficult it is to change any uh, any processes of, of filming. But we're already starting to see augmentation through people adapting and understanding how better to do things, ultimately reducing the amount of time needed on set to achieve the same goals or even better goals potentially. So with AI, fix it in post is becoming possible to fix in post, right? I would even go as far as to say just not thinking about it as like fix in post. I think that it just becomes part of the editing and creative process where there's tools that have so much more power to enable people to be able to, yes, they can reduce the amount of time potentially spent on set, but not necessarily that, and but reinvesting that the, the equivalent money in other things. But at the same time, having people, having the filmmaker, you know, that includes all of the filmmakers who are involved with the entire process, um, involved in a much more iterative way in post and allowing them to kind of evolve and craft story and edit in a way that's never been possible before. You know, if something's not quite working, that's kind of reapproaching it. In some ways, the you know, the reason why Pixar has had so many, so almost all commercially successful movies is they're able to iterate content entirely. And I think there's just more and more of that iterative power allowing the filmmakers to achieve their original intent is gonna come to live action and is already coming to live action, but will come more and more and more. Which is quite exciting for filmmakers, right? Being able to ultimately achieve their original vision more accurately, more often. What would you say to critics arguing that this AI tech is trying to replace people? Well, in the case of visual dubbing, as we call it, everyone's a winner. The actors uh, get more a, a wider audience, a global audience, right? Which ultimately it boils down at more eyeballs, also boils down to not just a wider exposure, but also higher pay. The original filmmaker, you know, the, the script holds its integrity more and they get to tell the story more authentically around the world in a way that they want to share their story. And, you know, the producers uh, ultimately get to monetize the content around the world in more effective ways. So there is certainly no one losing out as it relates to visual dubbing. And but there's, there's some questions around voice actors. And just for clarity, we use the voices of uh, voice actors to drive the visual change. So, you know, we don't sort of define the direction of things and there are some people out there doing synthetic voice and maybe that becomes more part of like the process, but we're not defining that. And that's like for the audio synthesis people to sort of, to work out with uh, the guilds and the unions. When it comes to redubbing foreign films, do you hire specific people for that? like for different languages? We hire the voice actors still in the same way that traditional dubbing is done. It's just that the script doesn't need to be changed to match the mouth movements of the original uh, visual. Script integrity can be held together more. And I suppose, you know, th there's an element of more authentic performance. If you're not trying to marry something up to a visual and you can just focus solely on the performance, you get a, a better performance as well, potentially is what we're seeing. Um, and then, you know, it's that performance, that audio performance matched with the uh, the better visual, which seems to be the thing that's having the most impact and changing uh, people's attitudes towards this content. Um, in the news, uh, you always see stuff about how Marvel has to reshoot another thing for their movie and then in, something went wrong and they have to go again. How expensive can reshoots be, like physically doing the reshoots? It's perfectly normal for $500,000 a day. Um, but dependent on the shot and dependent on who's in it and who what has to be cancelled for get people back to the set and then 
what private jets and cast and crew and light and makeup and what scene what scenes need to be or sets need to be rebuilt you know go into the millions potentially what was the most impressive use of this ai tech that you personally saw we're the only ones who are actually doing anything in the sort of visual space at the professional filmmaking level in as it relates to faces and uh, and and human bodies um we uh we've got a lot of time and we really like the guys over there at wonder dynamics and they're doing some really nice things and think they're also working in the professional filmmaking space but i think almost everybody else is just working in kind of a consumer environment which is a completely different challenge and so they're doing great things there but we're not focusing too too heavily on that <laughs> Nanika,